Good evening, people from uh, the South Island, people from Victoria. Um, basically, uh, looking forward to see you on Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. at the Christian Bookstore for a brief meeting to gather concerning the direction that we will be taking in the future with the ministry. So I have a few things to share type of thing with you. And I sure hope to see you in person for coffee and muffin. Social distancing will be respected and so forth. So uh, make an effort to meet in person. And I don't think that God will hold it against you and you have his protection over you as well. So I would like to welcome you to the um, last, before the last session of the book of Daniel as we come to an end. So page 10 of your outline, page 10 of 14. If you look at the bottom of the page, Arabic number six, Michael and Israel. Last week, we discussed a few things online concerning the Antichrist, and now we reach Arabic number six, Michael and Israel in chapter 12, verse 1. So make your abode, find your text right now, in chapter 12, verse 1 of the book of, of, the book of uh, Daniel. And then we pray and we move on into this session uh, this evening. Father of grace, once again we come into presence, into your presence by means of technology which for now have proven to be very unsuccessful. The people, Father, in a minority, have responded to listening to the totality of these videos, and that creates in my soul a terrific um, concern. Father, we give not priority to the things of the heavenlies. We give priority to this planet. We are fearful, Father, and we don't behave the way as we should. And for that reason, Father, I'm seeking forgiveness for myself in the areas of my life where I am failing you. And I'm seeking forgiveness for groups that I minister, Father, to see the people responding in such a way due to... Um, the pandemic. Forgive your churches, Father at large, that have decided sharply that we are not a necessity. I will have a hard time to believe many, many pastors on this island when they deliver a message that the Christian life is important. Once again, forgive them, Father, for having done what they've done. Turning the focus on this program helped me to sustain a good relationship with you. Without being pessimistic, but simply realistic, we need to come to our senses and acknowledge the declining of the faith on earth. Open your eyes and our souls to the book of Daniel right now and bless us in the things that we ought to learn. In Jesus' name, amen. Michael in Israel, chapter 12 of the book of Daniel, verse 1. Let's read it and make a few comments accordingly. Now at that time, now at that time, circle at that time, Michael, the great prince who stands guard over the sons of your people, circle your people, will arise. And there will be a time of distress, circle distress, such as never occurred since there was a nation until that time. And at that time, your people, everyone who is found written in the book, circle written in the book, will be rescued. At that time here means at the end of the events of verses 40 to 45, at the ends, at the ends of the events of verses 40 to 45 of chapter 11. If you go back to verse 40, of chapter 11, it says, at the end time of the king of the south, circle at the end time here, basically, it's at the end of time, at the end of the great tribulation. Now, at that time, verse 1, Michael the great prince here, Michael the great prince will stand against Michael the great prince who stand guard over the sons of your people will arise. So Michael will arise or will stand. It's a military term. 
It is a military term. It will stand for your people, the people of Israel. Michael is the archangel, A-R-C-H, angel. Michael is the archangel who stands on guard for the people of Israel. He stands in a military way and he will enter into a war against Satan at that time and his fallen angels. That war that I'm talking about right now is, describes, is described in the book of Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. And in that passage, Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9 here, basically Satan and his demons will be thrown down on the earth. And that's what I have on the screen right now in their fourth abode here. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9 here. They will thrown down on the earth to wage a war in the last three and a half years of the great tribulation against the people of Israel. So they will be confined to the earth for the remaining part of the great tribulation, which is 3.5 years right here. It's for that part. It's for the second half where Satan will be willing to destroy the entire population of the Jewish people so that they won't ask him to come back. So basically, Satan and his hosts will be thrown down into the abode number four, which is the earth here, for the second half. So Michael will throw Satan down on the earth and so on. In verse 12a, it says the great prince he is the great prince Aragadol because he is the archangel. He is the great prince because he is the archangel and he is also called the prince because he is one of the chief princes, he is one of the, the angels in charge of other common angels. We have several chief princes in the Bible, in the Bible. We are several chief princes, but we have in the Bible only, not seven, archangel. And he is the chief prince of Israel, so that's why it says, will stand as a guard over the sons of your people, and the people of Daniel is the Jewish people. So you can put in your notes, basically that's not Satan, but Michael is the one in charge of Israel positively to protect them. Okay. An example of this is found in Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verses 15 to 16. Michael will make sure that this will happen and Israel will survive, of course, because of God, but also because of Michael, that is a servant of the living God here in the form of the archangel. So Israel will survive the tribulation, even in the period of the 3.5 years where Satan will be willing to destroy them, they will not be destroyed because of the protection of Daniel and his standing up, standing up, if you want to, in a military way. I ask you that there will be a time of distress or a time of trouble. That's one of the expressions for the Great Tribulation in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. It's called the times of Jacob's distress or Jacob's trouble. While it is true that all mankind on the surface of the planet will suffer during the great period of the tribulation for seven years here, all humanity that will be left behind after the rapture will suffer tremendously under the great tribulation. It will be especially severe for the people of the Jews. And why is that? It's because of a principle that we have in the Bible called the principle of the firstborn, the principle of the firstborn. I read to you a passage in Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. Like I said, and I repeat, they will suffer more, the Jews, in the period of the Great Tribulation. That's why it's called the day of Jacob's distress. Because of a principle known in the scriptures, the principle of the firstborn that receive basically double for their sin. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her welfare 
uh, warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed, that she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sin. So that's the principle of the firstborn. As a nation, she's the firstborn of God, of God and so on. And she receives double for the sin here based upon that principle here. He, God, basically will punish Israel double for too much is given, much is required. Okay, and it's good for you and I also. We are, we are given much knowledge to the scriptures. So this is a knowledge that cannot be swiped under the carpet for that type of knowledge, we will, you and I together, be kept accountable. And that's why the Great Tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble, because of the principle of receiving double for their sin. And also in verse 1, it says, um, everyone, uh, a time of distress such as never occurred since there was a nation until that time here, in other words, the great tribulation, what the Jews will suffer at that time, will supersede all kinds of persecution of the Jews in the past. The crusader, the, um, the crusaders, the holocaust at the time of the Nazi and so on, it will supersede all this. Jot down the reference in your notes. Matthew chapter 21, chapter 24 rather, verse 21. And it will found, it will basically fall upon those that are not found in the book, who is found written, um, your people, everyone who is found written in the book will be rescued. Those who are found in the book will be rescued. You have two possibilities, either way to take it here. It could be either the Lamb's book of life, which we will be studying probably in the book of Revelation or the book of life. Either way, it means those who are believers. Either way, it means simply those who are believers. All right? It means those who are believers. The point is that the elect of Israel will escape. The elect of Israel will escape. And here... The elect are the same elect as in, Ma as in Matthew chapter 24, verse 22. Contextually, it's not the church at all, but the Jewish believers of the Great Tribulation. Yes, we are elect, but in the context here, it's the elect, the Jewish people that will survive the Great Tribulation. And it will at that time, the elect only include one third of the entire Jewish population living in the Great Tribulation, because as we know from Zechariah chapter 13, verses 8 and 9, two-thirds of the Jewish population will die under the persecution of the Antichrist. Under Adolf Hitler and the Nazi, one-third of the Jewish people perished in the last World War conflict, number two. But in the future, there will be a second Holocaust where two-thirds of the Jewish nation will perish, okay? And the elect of Matthew chapter 24, verse 22, are the ones who have their names written in the book of life and will, sur will survive that period of time, while the others won't survive that period of time. So with this, we're done with point six. We take point number seven, the resurrection, chapter 12, verses two and three. Come with me, two and three. This is under lowercase a, the timing of the resurrection, chapter 12, verse 2. And then we'll take b, the state of the resurrected saints, chapter 12, verse 3. So now, according to your outlines, we labor at the end, at the bottom of page 10, the resurrection. This is uh, most assuredly the last session before the last. Next week, we do our last session and on Saturday, we discuss what to do after this. Come with me in verses 2 and 3. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake. These to everlasting life. Circle these to everlasting life. But the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Contempt. Let's take lowercase a, the timing of the resurrection, verse 2. That's the timing of it. After the events of the Great Tribulation here, 
there will be a resurrection. Here is not dealing with the resurrection of the church, okay, the church saints, but the resurrection of the Old Testament saints. I repeat that right there in verse 2. He is not dealing with the resurrection of the church saints, but he is dealing with the resurrection of the Old Testament saints. The way it reads, verse 2 and 3, it deals with two resurrections, the righteous to everlasting life and the others to everlasting shame and everlasting contempt. The reading in English makes it as if the two occur at the same time. When you read it fast, verse 2 here, it counts as if, uh, basically in verse 2, not 2 and 3, but verse 2, as if the two resurrections occurs at the same times. And those who endorse the view, the false view of amillennialism, they believe in only one general re uh, uh, resurrection, ignoring that Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 totally separates the two resurrections by a period of 1,000 years. So you cannot amalgamate the two here. The two resurrections, the first and the second resurrection, are separated by 1,000 years. Okay? In the Hebrew original here, when you read the Hebrew of Daniel, there is actually an implication of some amount of time between the two resurrections in verse 2. I'm going to give you, in English, a little bit of a more literal way to read the text based upon the original. Quote, And many from among the sleepers of dust of the earth shall awake, these shall be unto everlasting life, comma, but those shall be unto shame and everlasting contempt. End of quote. Once again. And many among the sleepers of dust of the earth shall awake. These shall be unto everlasting life, but those shall be unto shame and everlasting contempt. Okay? So in verse 2, what we have is the resurrection of the righteous. Here is the one after the tribulation for the thousand-year kingdom. I repeat that. Those who will awake and be unto everlasting life here, it's the righteous. They will be resurrected for the duration that they may live the duration of the thousand-year kingdom. There will be two groups of saints here, resurrected after the second coming of the Messiah. We know that he comes back at the end of the Great Tribulation. We skip that, and this I will give you that into, into a moment of view. There will be two groups of saints resurrected after the second coming of the Messiah. The first group of saints resurrected after the coming of the Messiah will be the Old Testament saints. Isaiah 26.19 Isaiah 26.19 reads as follow 26.19 Your dead will live their corpses will rise you who lie in the dust awake and shout for joy for your dew is as the dew of the dawn and the earth will give birth to the departed spirits here that's the Old Testament saints the first group that will be resurrected after the second coming. The second group are the tribulation saints, those who were killed during the great tribulation. We have that in Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 to 6. Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 to 6. I will read that for you. Revelation 20 Verses 4 to 6. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. We don't need that part A. And I saw the soul of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God. And those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hands, and they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Okay, we'll stop right there. That's the tribulation saints. The church saints are resurrected sometimes before the tribulation starts. 
the, tribula the, the, the church saints were, we are already resurrected. Here, the context is the resurrection of Israel and the Old Testament saints. So, what follows is important right now. So, there is an Israel that survived the Great Tribulation, and one-third of them will survive. So, living Israel will enter the kingdom, and they will be joined by the resurrected Israel, as well as the tribulation, tribulational saints. Because the first time, that's the first time that will Israel will basically own the totality of the promised land. And at that point of time, when the resurrected Israel of the Old Testament and the tribulational saints here will enter the Messianic kingdom, it's at that time of point that the, uh, of time that the promises of the Jewish covenants will find their completion and total fulfillment, like such as owning the land and owning the Messiah and everybody will be saved. It's Israel. That's one key promise of the new covenant. They shall all know me, says the Lord. So during the thousand-year kingdom, there will be no Jewish evangelism. All the Jews will be saved, the Jews of that time in the future. The other sleepers of verse 2, those who will be raised to shame and everlasting contempt, will be resurrected only 1,000 years later. Isaiah 24, 21 and 22. Isaiah 24, verses 21 and 22. 24, 21 and 22. So it will happen in that day that Jehovah will punish the host of heaven on high and the kings of the earth on earth. They will be gathered together like prisoners in the dungeon and will be confined in prison and after many days they will be punished. Okay, so it's after the thousand year kingdom. We go back to Revelation 20, because I stopped early. We go back to Revelation 20, verse 5. That's what I said I will read later. Verse 5. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. So they will only be resurrected, the unbelievers, after the thousand-year kingdom. Now the sleepers, the righteous one, they go to everlasting life. And everlasting life, it's the first time that this is mentioned into the Old Testament, the uh, everlasting life of chapter uh, 12 of Daniel here. And this is known, the everlasting life unto everlasting life, it is known as being the first resurrection. I just read it to you in verse chapter 20 of Revelation, verses 4, 5, and 6. The term first resurrection here, it's only for the righteous one, only. So when we use the term the first resurrection, it does embrace or content, or, uh, con or, um, content only the righteous one. It comes in four stages. That's what I have here, and I hope it was not disturbing to, disturbing to have you there. It's not the one-time resurrection. And what, what I'm talking about right now, the four stages, of course, it's for believers only. This, I would like you to listen to that two, three times, because I'm bumpy sometimes, and on tape I go too fast. But the positive issue for you is the fact that you can pause it. You need to know it by heart, not to be shaken into your composure and so on. The first resurrection will come in four stages. The first re resurrection embrace both believers and non-believers, true or false? False. Only believers. The first one to be resurrected unto glorified life was Christ Jesus. It was the first one to be resurrected. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 24. I don't want to hear the resurrection of Lazarus. You're too mature to go to that place. Lazarus was resurrected before Christ, but you know, you and I know, that Lazarus was resurrected, destined to die again. So I don't want to get into that kind of discussion. It's for baby believers. 
the first one that has been resurrected unto glorified life, never to die again, is the Lord Jesus Christ because he has prominence and preeminence in everything. The second group are the church saints, sometimes before the great tribulation. At the rapture, which occurred before the great tribulation, those who died as believers will be resurrected, will probably include you and I, if we are not raptured before. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 and 18. Third group is the Old Testament saints in Israel and the tribulational saints. They're resurrected right there in our book of Daniel. Okay, so that's all I need. Four groups. Christ Jesus, a group of one. You and I, we see we come before them. We before the Old Testament saints and everything. No need to sweat, no need to covet, no need to get into replacement theology. All of this is fallacy and sinful. We have our place. We will get resurrected at the rapture way prior to the Old Testament saints. We're coming back with Christ. So we are already resurrected with him in heaven at that time. Thirdly, the Old Testament saints in Israel that we discuss in the book of Daniel right now and the tribulation saints are also in need to be resurrected and so on. So your first resurrections come in four stages. Second stage, third stage, fourth stage. And in Revelation 20 verse 5 points out that the resurrection of the tribulation saints complete the first resurrection. Come with, back with me in Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 verse 5. And the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. And he says this is the first resurrection. The first resurrection comprises only the believer. And it comes in four stages. Christ Jesus, the church, Old Testament, uh, the, the, the church, the Old Testament saints, and the tribulational saints here. As I read the sentence, this is the first resurrection. The first resurrection when the tribulational saints will be resurrected at complete set. It's finished. The first resurrection will be completed. Because no one else will be resurrected again until the completion of the 1,000 year. Those raised a thousand years later are only unbelievers. Only unbelievers. That's those who will be resurrected unto everlasting shame and content. That's the second resurrection. The second resurre resurrection is that of unbelievers only. And that also will happen in two stages. The second resurrection after 1,000 year kingdom in two stages. The first one to be resurrected will be the Antichrist, resurrected by Jesus after the second coming. Before the 1,000 year kingdom starts, it will be cast into the lake of fire. And then after that, all other humans, the unbelievers, after 1,000 year kingdom, their second death, is recorded in Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. And that will complete the second resurrection. Chapter 20, verse 14 reads as follows. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Now before we close that first session, let me make a few comments based upon B, the state of, res of the resurrected saints, right there in verse 3. And then we'll close and we'll do another session next week. In verse 3, come with me in Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, we'll read as follows. Those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now we are discussing parenthetical lowercase b, the state of the resurrected saints in verse 3. The wise are those who have insight. In the ASV of 1901, it says the wise. The word wise is an Old Testament concept used in comparison with fools, 
meaning believers and unbelievers, saved or non-saved. So the wise are the saves and the fools are those who said that there is no God. Their brightness, they will, bright, they will have brightness of the expense. The Hebrew word for expense or firmament means the shining vault in these heavens with all its star shining. And the emphasis is on the brightness, which is a symbol of the Shekinah glory. The resurrected saints are going to reflect the Shekinah glory after their resurrection, just like you and I. Just like Moses did when he came back down from the Mount Sinai, he was not the Shekinah, but he was reflecting it. It will be true of those who lead many to righteousness, especially during the Great Tribulation. And one example of it are the 144,000 evangelists of Revelation chapter 1, verses uh, 1 to 5. Okay? So they will shine because they have led many people to righteousness, protecting the Jews, evangelizing the Jews, and so on during that period of time. We will shine also. You and I, we return with him, and we will also have our glorified body and so on. So the vision that began back in chapter 10 officially ends here in verse 4. Okay? In verse 4 here, it officially ends in verse 4. And that's why next week we will take number 8, the sealing of the book, chapter 12, verse 4. But I will keep it for another session so you can make a note that next week will be our last session as you will have completed the entire book of Daniel. I bid you shalom. I'm looking forward to see you on Saturday. God bless you and do not forget your support. Out of sight, out of mind has proven to be very true with lots of people in Victoria. Uh, you might have forgotten to support us, but on my part, without any pride, I did not forget to do the sessions. This is my work. This is my commitment unto you. So if you can respond to it, that would be plain in the center of God's will. God bless you. We bid you shalom. Thank you.